Hong Kong is a rich, modern, 21st century city considered one of the top financial hubs of Asia. But many residents have deep anxiety over how to make ends meet. One in five people live in poverty. The minimum wage is four euros and 30. And in one recent poll, two thirds of residents said they were unhappy with their quality of life. That's not a surprise considering it has one of the world's longest working hours and some of its highest rents. As the pressures mount, cramped families have little hope that things will get better, as DW's Matthias Bollinger shows us in this report. Hannah is the youngest of a family of six sharing this tiny two-room apartment in eastern Hong Kong. She lives with her mother Sammy, her father and his family in roughly 40 square meters. And although this is quite common for families here, the grandparents have asked us not to film them and not to take any close-ups of objects in the flat. The flat is so small that we have to use every corner to store our stuff. It feels like our whole life is on display. It's embarrassing. The young family shares a small bedroom. The three others sleep in the living room and hallway. Sammy's husband has to work two jobs while she takes care of their daughter. To escape the tiny space, she spends most of the afternoons with her daughter at the playground downstairs. Fortunately, we don't have any serious conflicts. Most of my friends have regular fights with their in-laws because of the lack of space. <laughs> Young people in Hong Kong find it almost impossible to rent, let alone buy a flat. The rent for a 25 square meter studio can easily cost 2,000 euros per month, an average salary in the territory. This is one of the factors fueling young people's anger in the current crisis. But now the government has come up with a grand plan to solve the city's housing problem. We are reclaiming a land of um, about 130 hectares of land from the sea. And this small bay is just the beginning. Three artificial islands are supposed to follow a total of 1,700 hectares. They would be the biggest such islands in the world. We are expecting that these um, artificial islands will provide housing units for some 400,000 to 700,000 people. And 70% of these housing units will be public housing. It's for the Hong Kong people. But the project is controversial in a city where official plans are often met with suspicion. Opposition lawmaker Kwok Ka Ki suggests that there would be enough industrial wasteland on the fringes of the city that would be quicker and cheaper to develop. Well, this is something very peculiar. The only reason that we can think of why we need this project is um, this land town reclamation areas is actually at the center of uh, so-called the Greater Bay Areas. That project is a government initiative to integrate the city's economy further with the Chinese mainland. Since last year, the world's longest bridge connects Lantau Island in the territory's west to Zhuhai and Macau on the other side of the Pearl River Delta. The islands could link to the city center. These issues have little impact on Sammy's life. Her child will be grown up when the islands are completed. She is betting on public housing. We've already tried five or six times. But what can we do? We can't afford an apartment on the free market. So we'll try again. Since we're a young family, we're hoping to move up the waiting list. Until then, she will do her best to get along with her parents-in-law and spend as much time as she can outdoors. And we have journalist Laurel Chor in Hong Kong to tell us more. Often with political unrest, it goes hand in hand with economic unhappiness. I think a lot of people forget, for example, that uh, the students who protested on Tiananmen Square back in 1989, it was happening in the context of inflation in China. Without discounting the genuine demands of people for political change, uh, talk a little bit more about the economic challenges in Hong Kong. Can they really be fixed? 
Whether it can be really fixed is a question for the government. And honestly, there are a lot of solutions. Uh, the government has a huge surplus. They could be using a lot of that money on building public housing. There is a lot of land that's not used. So there's a lot of solutions that could help solve this crisis for regular people. Um, I, there is a graffiti that I saw a few weeks back that I think really sums up the sentiment that protesters feel. And it was, uh, you know, I'm paying 7,000 Hong Kong, which is about 700 euros for an apartment the size of a cell. And you really think I'm out here afraid of jail? Um, so I think people right now in Hong Kong feel like the, they don't have, there's no space for them in Hong Kong's future. Right, right now, the city is not taking care of them. They can't afford to buy a house. They don't, don't see a future for themselves in the city the way things are going. So they're desperate and they basically feel like they have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So they're fighting for Hong Kong. They're fighting for their future. They're fighting for their identities. Um, so I think what we'll see is that protesters really think this is their last stand. Um, and like you said, this is certainly exacerbated by the economic situation. Laurel Chor, thank you.